These days, it's more important than ever to teach kids about money. Very important to teach kids about money. I think this recession has pointed out that money is really a life skill. Our kids are growing up at ever younger ages. They're exposed to corporate marketers at ever younger ages and more things. If kids don't learn how to manage money well from a young age, money's going to end up managing them. And that's no fun. That's why father of six Anton Simonovic started 3jars.com, a site that helps parents manage their child's allowance and helps kids learn about money. What we do at 3jars is we make it fun and easy for kids to learn how to manage their money. So from the parent's perspective, it's a 90 second sign up. They decide how much allowance they're going to pay a child how much should be earmarked to each of the three jars, the spend, the save, and the share jar. They could upload a photo of their child if they want, and away they go. From the child's perspective, we operate much like an online bank, but maximize the child's learning around managing money. Kids are empowered by it, it's fun for them, they like it, and the whole point is for them to learn these financial lessons that become second nature to them so that they practice those things when they leave the family nest. But Three Jars isn't a bank, more like an IOU from parents to kids. The parent still holds on to the cash, but kids can make requests to spend, save, or share portions of their money. Parents can then approve, deny, or edit these requests. So though kids are managing their own finances, parents still have ultimate financial control. And Anton has five allowance tips to help you get started. The first one that many ask is how much to pay. What a conventional rule of thumb is your child's age in dollars per week. I'll tell you, in an environment like this, so you may want to do half of your child's age in dollars per week. Next, be consistent. It's really important to be consistent with allowance. And that's a difficult thing to do in practice. We come home on a Friday night, we're tired, we don't have the exact change as it were. Three dollars can seem trite to a parent, but it's your child's source of income. Treat it with the respect that it deserves. Tip number three, practice makes perfect. It's important that we allow our kids to practice money. But what does that mean? We take it for granted if we want our kids to be great athletes, that they have to work hard, they have to practice a lot. It's no different with money. It's best that kids practice with small amounts of money and when the consequences are low, when they're young, rather than when they leave the family nest and can really get themselves into some trouble. The fourth is to embrace technology. Our kids have to learn healthy digital habits. By the time your five or 10 or 15 year old is off to college, it's only going to be the digital world. You can use technology to tweak your child's money behaviors. For example, if your child is a spender, and so many kids are, increase their save allocation. Put more of the money toward the save jar rather than the share jar and let them make those virtual investments so that they see their savings growing and they develop these great habits around savings. And finally, should allowance be tied to chores? Anton says no. When allowance is tied to chores, it puts the focus on the chore rather than on managing the money. Now, that's not to say that kids shouldn't do chores. Of course they should be doing chores. They're kids, they're part of the family. Everybody has to pitch in. But to monitor those chores, rather than using money to ensure that they're done, you know, consider taking away other privileges, cell phone privileges, television privileges, or otherwise. And I found that, you know, we have found that to be much more effective. For more allowance help, just visit www.3jars.com. <laughs>